The announcement of the Falcon Heavy in early April 2011 was a big game changer in the space launch industry. And now more than a decade has passed. This monster is still an engineering masterpiece and the best choice for contractors. Recently, SpaceX and NASA once again launched the mind-blowing Falcon Heavy rocket. What makes this latest flight of the Falcon Heavy so special? Why is SpaceX's Falcon Heavy always the preferred choice for U.S. government contracts? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. It's been six months since SpaceX has launched the last Falcon Heavy rocket back in 2023. During that same period, the company launched over 60 Falcon 9 rockets and two Starship rockets. However, the Falcon Heavy remains a bright star, attracting hundreds of millions of viewers due to its power and the stunning dual landing it achieves. Equally important, the Falcon Heavy is the rocket of choice for carrying extreme payloads for government officials and private customers alike. One could ask if there is any rocket that can surpass the importance of the Falcon Heavy. Of course, there's Starship, but until Starship can carry its first payload into space, the Falcon Heavy remains the most powerful and important rocket currently in operation. To kick off their major plans for 2024, SpaceX recently launched the Falcon Heavy into space for the first time this year. This launch marked a smooth and wonderful milestone, promising similar success for upcoming launches. Tuesday's launch was the second Falcon Heavy used by NASA's Launch Services Program, the part of the agency that assigns missions to rockets based on capabilities. On top of it was GOES-U, a GOES-R class weather satellite that will be replacing the class namesake satellite, currently known as GOES-16. The satellite will sit in geosynchronous orbit over the eastern coast of the U.S. and the Atlantic Ocean, monitoring weather events from Canada on down to South America and as far as the east coast of Africa. In a few weeks' time, the satellite will enter its final orbit and be renamed from GOES-U to GOES-19. Okay, but how did the launch go? What was supposed to be a suspected scrub due to poor weather turned into a glorious day for a rocket launch. Not far into the two-hour window, SpaceX found a time slot that was acceptable for launch, and as we expected from the company, the Falcon Heavy launched without issue. Given this was a Falcon Heavy, a Falcon 9 rocket with two extra boosters strapped to the side, and it wasn't a direct to geostationary orbit launch, we got to witness, in my opinion, still the coolest thing in spaceflight, dual booster landings. Most of SpaceX's launches in recent years have landed on one of the company's three drone ships. Nowadays, it's rare to see boosters return to land. However, with this launch, the two side boosters of the Super Heavy booster returned, touching down at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, located next to KSC, about eight minutes after liftoff. Furthermore, this homecoming created a completely different experience for viewers compared to the launch of the three sister satellites of GOES-U, all of which flew into space on United Launch Alliance's non-reusable Atlas V rocket. Indeed, this switch in launch vehicles was quite challenging for the contractors of the GOES-U program. Pam Calderwood, the deputy program manager for Lockheed Martin's GOES-U, said that during the design and construction of this satellite, they had to make several modifications to support horizontal integration with a booster instead of the vertical integration used in previous Atlas V launches with ULA. The tipping of the spacecraft, all the mechanical specialized equipment to do that, a lot of it had to be updated, redesigned, Calderwood said. And then we had to also take a look at the support structure to make sure that when you have something that's basically in the 11,000 pound range that you're trying to sit on its side to make sure that there's the proper supports needed. However, this switch was extremely worthwhile, not only because the Atlas V launch vehicles has ceased production, but more importantly because of the long-term benefits that the Falcon Heavy rocket brings to future missions. Compared to the power and reliability of the Falcon Heavy, its launch costs are absurdly low. We can directly compare costs between Falcon Heavy and NASA's SLS. Upon direct comparison, the cost disparities are sobering, proving that commercial development of large rockets likely represents the future of the industry. To be fair, NASA's SLS will have more lift capacity than the Falcon Heavy, 70 tons to lower Earth orbit versus 64 tons, and a bigger fairing to accommodate flying a wider payload into space. It'll also have a more capable upper stage that'll be able to send larger payloads into deeper space. However, these improvements come at a very, very steep price. Consider just a single data point. NASA annually spends about $3 billion to develop the SLS rocket and ground launch systems for the massive rocket at Kennedy Space Center. The SLS rocket was originally supposed to launch in 2017, but the maiden flight of the SLS booster has slipped to 2022. That's understandable. Most large aerospace rockets experience delays. 
However, the cost of a three-year delay is about a dozen billion at least. For the sake of argument, consider the cost of this three-year delay against the lift capability NASA could have bought by purchasing Falcon Heavy rockets from SpaceX. That $10 billion equates to 110 launches of the reusable Falcon Heavy, or 67 of the expendable version. This provides up to 3,800 tons of lift, the equivalent of 10 ISSs, or one heck of a moon base. Obviously, NASA does not need that many launches, but it could buy several Falcon Heavy rockets a year and have the funds to build meaningful payloads to launch on them. In practical terms, NASA has paid nothing for the development of the Falcon Heavy rocket. In fact, by leasing its unused Launch Complex 39A to SpaceX for Falcon Heavy launches, the space agency has saved about a million dollars in annual maintenance costs on the historical launch complexes. In addition to its cost savings, Falcon Heavy consistently offers other factors that make contractors trust it with the most expensive missions in the world. The Falcon Heavy creates a completely new payload weight class. This capability can be exploited in multiple ways for existing payloads, such as launching more than one communications satellite in a single payload. The large payload fairing gives payload designers a lot of room for their payloads, which do not need to be as compact and can thus be wider and more than twice as heavy as a shuttle payload. The Falcon Heavy also opens up a window to much larger, heavier payloads. The Falcon Heavy will be able to place more than two shuttle payloads in orbit in one launch for about one-fifteenth of the price of a single shuttle launch. The only thing missing is the ability to move items placed in orbit in a specific place where you want them, such as the space station. For larger items, such as new habitats or instruments, just two large payloads, a low-Earth orbit space tug, and a propellant depot would solve the problem. This can allow much larger space station modules to be launched and thus allow new additions to the station. The large centrifuge facility is the most critical item that was deleted during the multi-decades of budget cutting that affected the station. It's still a vitally needed module to allow studies of mammals and low-gravity fields to prove that we can colonize Mars. Also, additional crew habitats and laboratory modules were originally planned and then canceled. The only shuttle capability that the Falcon Heavy would not provide is the ability to return large objects from orbit, but this has been rarely required. There are many other large payloads that a Falcon Heavy could launch that do not involve the space station. With a 53 to 70 ton payload, a very large optical space telescope could be orbited to replace Hubble. 50 tons to orbit has been the assumed minimum unit mass for the practical construction of space solar power. Even with Falcon Heavy launching the equipment, space solar cannot yet compete with coal or nuclear power. But even now, it could compete with ground solar or wind power, especially if intended for base load supply. Five Falcon Heavy launches could place 250 tons of solar panels in Earth orbit. An additional launch could orbit a solar-powered ion or plasmaton, which could move the equipment to geosynchronous Earth orbit, avoiding the huge penalty of using liquid fuel to reach the higher orbit. Alternately, a single Heavy launch could place a single prototype 50-ton power in orbit to be used as an emergency power supply. This could be enough to supply about 10 megawatts to disaster sites over an entire continent via laser beam. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.